Good morning, everybody. This is Miss Murphy. Um, I'm here to talk about part one of starting your memory abstraction, your watercolor abstract painting, um, so that we can move on to the next steps. Um, make sure you have your watercolors. Make sure you have your brushes or brush. Make sure you have your water. And um, also, I suggest a paper towel. Um, you may even want to consider using a hair dryer in this process. If you want something to dry quicker, um, less waiting time in between, I'm going to talk about part one and then let mine dry a little bit and then go on to the next stage. So the first part um, that we did actually before this was we practiced doing watercolor techniques. We practiced a wet on wet, a drop color on wet, a dry brush, flat wash, gradation, as well as a blending of layers. So and then you were given a space below to experiment. Now that we are getting into your watercolor abstraction, you are going to have to demonstrate using three or more of these techniques within your painting. So you want to think about before you begin your color choices. Your color choices um, should relate to the memory, the personal significant memory that you are thinking about um, in the meaning behind this abstract work. Um, so you want to think about the colors. Um, remember you had to brainstorm and think about what was the mood or feeling. So consider color choices that relate directly to the feeling the mood, the tone of that personal memory that you are expressing in this abstract painting. Um, so I am choosing um, my cooler colors here. I'm going to be choosing the green, the blue, and the violet um, because my memory was a calm and peaceful time. So I want to think about colors that will make me feel that way and evoke that feeling in my painting. Um, and I also want to say you can have different size brushes. I tend to use a larger brush when I'm starting, um, only because I'm trying to get the background started and that's kind of usually a flat wash or, or like a wet on wet, maybe a combination. So think about your color choices and how they relate to the mood and then think about what uh, watercolor technique you want to start with. Generally, you want to start with a wash or a wet on wet or a flat wash. So it is your choice whether or not you want to get your paper wet first. I am choosing to get my paper wet first with a wet on wet. You can, you don't have to do it this way. And make sure your paper is clean. I just had some pencil um, eraser on there. So I am going to choose my uh, cool colors here. Remember that when you're combining colors that you want to make sure that you're picking colors that are either analogous. Um, remember because you're going to be blending colors together you don't want to choose colors that are complementary which will make for muddy a muddy color combination. So your first layer might be pretty light. I'm going to start out I meant to say also you're doing this on either eight and a half by 11 or nine by 12 paper. And I wanna blend another color in here. I know it probably looks really light. I am doing a wash to begin. And then I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to add my other my other techniques. So I am showing you how you want to start. <clears throat> Sometimes it's just kind of random. So this is part one, just getting a wash down. And you want to make sure you're using the whole space. Now, the other thing I want to mention is don't be afraid to let your watercolor drip on you know this in this part you might want some effects so what I'm going to do is actually tilt my paper around a little bit if you want to start out like that 
you know, just letting it um, flow is going to give it more interesting um, elements. So if you want a little more of that in the beginning, sometimes I purposefully do that. Sometimes I just do it on a whim. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this green in here. And sometimes what I do if I'm actually letting it, I'll get one side wet a little bit more like that. Add a little more water to it. And then you might want to just add just a tad bit more on one side. If you really want it to go through your paper here, I'm going to add a little blue. So probably you're going to start out with more of your, your wash or wet techniques here. And sometimes I like I take a darker and lighter color together. I like to I experiment with them a little bit here in combination. Remember to wash your brush as you're going in between. And then if you have a lighter color, it, it's a really neat effect if you're letting it drip onto those. Sometimes I need to give it a little push here. So I'll get my brush wet and let it go through, see what it does. So if I just wet the edge of it, it's gonna actually help it along a little bit. And then I just kind of let it go in different directions. Like I said, you don't have to do it like this, but this is kind of fun to experiment. So what I did was I started out with my lighter color and then I added my darker value and I just let it go. Sometimes I tilt it in different directions and it's neat to see what it does when I turn it around. So letting that go. Um, you can also, uh, if you had a straw, you could blow on it and just blow it in different directions. Um, that's an, an interesting experimental Thing you can do if you want to do that um, or even just blowing on it but I'm just going to let mine go a little bit and then think about you know how you're using all the little edges here so I actually think I'm gonna add a little more purple but I'm gonna let this dry now and then I'm going to show you the next so I have on here I have a little bit of I have mostly the wet on wet effect um, maybe if I wanted to do a little bit of drop color on wet, then I could try another color in there just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try, and usually it's best if you try like a darker color within a lighter color when you do that. So just see what you come up with. Make sure it's wet enough though. And then just kind of go around and see. Give it some texture. I'm gonna let this drip down a little more. I'm gonna add a little more water here. Sometimes I get a little into it and just let it create itself as I go. Twisting and turning the paper in different directions just to see what happens. It's the fun part, experimenting in the beginning as I create my background. Um, and I'm going to look around on my edges here to make sure that there's nothing else I can really add because it's going to be really nice when it dries. That way I can add more. I'm going to add a little bit more violet up here. Blending of layers a little bit in this corner. So it looks like it's gradual. And then I might even, if I had some white areas, I could even do a little bit of dry brush. I'm gonna do that next in my next video, but I just wanted to show you, think about how to get it started. Really experiment with letting it flow. You wanna also create a sense of unity throughout. So you wanna just go around here, you know, maybe if I need to, if I wanna 
paint this in a little darker in the corner. But you want to make it look natural, you know, just kind of like you didn't um, paint a section, but rather it's all blending together well. So thus I tend to kind of let it drip off into the sides and meld together like so. This is really kind of the fun part in the beginning when you get to just go with the flow. So now you don't have to do it like this. You could also just do a very flat wash with one color and then add layers on top of that. I started out with a wet on wet wash um, and then I'm just letting it go in different directions. And thinking about my color choices in terms of um, how it relates to the memory, the personal memory that I wanted to think about. So I want to make sure I have a couple more dark areas in here. So I'm going back in on the edges. And you may even decide, you know, like you're going to experiment a few times on another piece of paper, just to experiment with your colors first. Um, but you do want to show some light and dark values in your background. You don't want it to just be one solid tone and you want it to have some interesting textures. You want to show that you've also used the techniques. So this is my stage one here. I'm going to um, get a hair dryer on this. I'm going to let it dry a little bit, but something else, if you wanted to have a little texture, you could take your paper towel or a sponge and you could also just dab your, now I like this like here, so I'm gonna leave that, but you could also create a little bit of texture if you dipped your paper towel in the water. And I'm adding a little bit of texture here. Sorry about the noise. And then I'm gonna let this dry and come back and add a second layer. So this is really layer one. So this is part one, layer one of your watercolor background. 